Welcome to another week of the ABCs of Google+. We are uh, doing a special time this week uh, in order to have Nicholas Cardot help us out. Um, because our subject this week is making that perfect uh, post. So basically we're talking about content stuff here and uh, Nick's got a great book he just came out with, part one of a three-part series on content. So I thought he'd be a perfect guest for this week's uh, episode. Nick. Yes, sir. So tell us a little bit first about the book before we start getting into the show. What sure. inspired you to write a book? <clears throat> well, actually, the theme of my blog, several years ago, I wanted to find a way that I could really focus in on something meaningful. And what I finally came out with after sketching out these mind maps that went on for miles and miles was that there's basically everything revolves around three core concepts to try to become more successful online. And I call them the ABCs of blogging and, uh, <laughs> uh, or the ABCs of online presence or whatever you want to call it. So that's why the book became titled Blogging to the Third Power. And the first one is amazing content. That's the core. You know, everyone says content is king. Everyone knows that. That's the old cliche. Second one is brilliant design, and the third one is commanding influence. And so they, when you have all three in place, they work together to really help you. Cool. And uh, so when you started with the blogging project and this, was it kind of always your goal to move into uh, creating a, a, a book, or did that kind of grow out of the other <clears throat> stuff you were doing? It basically grew out of the other stuff I was doing. In fact, about uh, probably 50% of the content in the book is taken from, from the blog, things I'd written that were aligning with those three core values. And, uh, and so this book here obviously covers the first one, Amazing Content, and like, like you mentioned, it's maybe a three-part series, whereas the follow-up books will cover the other two principles. Good deal, good deal. And uh, I believe I've got links in the notes. If I don't, I will definitely make certain and get links in the notes uh, <clears throat> for his book. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it, I didn't actually get them in. Sorry, Nick. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, it's only it's uh, three dollars and ninety five cents. Um, uh, it's on Amazon <laughs> Kindle. Here, oh, can you hold on just a second? Someone's knocking on the door. <laughs> you bet. Like back in like thirty seconds. All right. So while he's stepping out, Sandra and I have a bit of a announcement to make, right, Sandra? Correct. Correct. <laughs> now, why, why don't you go ahead and tell uh, our audience the exciting news, what's going to be changing next week with the ABCs of Google+. Well, next week we have a very exciting guest. <laughs> Uh, we have someone that's going to be joining our show as a another co-host, which um, a lot of you probably already know this person already, but she certainly brings a lot of uh, energy and, oh, I gave it away, it's a she. <laughs> well, that only gets half of the population from Google+, Plus, so, you know. Okay. <laughs> she brings yeah. a lot of energy and a lot of fun, and definitely she knows how to smile, which is a good one, because... Um, uh, joy and happiness and making people feel good is part of uh, being successful in learning. <laughs> it, it is. I was trying to think of a good word to put with that, and it was like, okay, what is it? So um, if you feel good, then you feel more like learning. And uh, I think that that's part of what we try to do here. So we're really pleased to announce that we're going to have this person join us next week. Now you can add your two cents, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> no, I read, a, uh, I read a, a research paper recently that said that when you smile, people naturally tend to think that you're smarter than if you're not smiling, like a random stranger who sees you. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's wow. really cool. <laughs> so then we should all look pretty smart today, right? We're all smiling right now. <laughs> we, we all look like geniuses. <clears throat> and uh, the ABCs of Google Plus is going to get a lot smarter looking starting next week. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I, you know, you've got us all in suspense, Sandra. I think you can drop the bomb. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Our new third co-host joining us every week she can, starting next Wednesday, is...
the monogamous temptress. <laughs> yes, Delilah is going to be joining us as a regular part of the ABCs of Google Plus. Um, it, it, it really is a nice fit because Delilah's business model rounds out the things that Sandra and I do. And basically, between the three of us, we're covering every aspect of the beginning parts of, um, of the Google Plus experience. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all about HOAs, getting started with HOAs. Sandra's all about the how things function and uh, you know how to uh, how to do the, the the basic steps and make those uh, work well for you and uh, Delilah's whole part is how to get that engagement and I don't think anybody in the history of Google Plus has done a better job of dropping onto this network in a month and blowing up um, than she has. So she's clearly in the last 30 days proved she knows how to get engagement and we're going to bring that piece to this and make her a part of the team. We're excited. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not uh, very familiar with her so I'll just uh, have to take your guys' word for it and tune in. <laughs> well, I mean a lot of people probably are not as familiar because she has been here a short time. Mm -hmm. However, she has um, made a lot of presence in that short time, mm -hmm. so um, that could be why you're not familiar with her. Yeah, and quite I mean, honestly, the reason I became familiar was because of her her name and then her HOA name. Um, <clears throat> she's holding HOAs that I know about and I certainly learn more, and that's on uh, Happy Hour. Um, they get around and make yeah. drinks. <laughs> it was actually her, I've seen her around a little bit, but it was actually her name that was the reason I did not like follow her and engage with her because my wife interacts on Google Plus with me as well and I, just, <laughs> I didn't want her to come and be like, hey, who is this monogamous temptress that you're chatting with on here? <laughs> you know the funny thing? I did the same thing and, and then I saw Cheryl was actually engaging with her and I went, oh, that was okay. okay. It's probably all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and and she funny. and she does. Uh, uh, she came on the platform um, because of relationships and relationship building and so forth. You know, and you can take that in several ways. <laughs> so. Oh 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 oh! She's in the audience. Okay, uh, Delilah, we're actually gonna bring you on. She she didn't think she was gonna be able to make it today, so um, she is now in the audience. She's done with her radio show. I'm gonna send you an invite, Delilah. So uh, if you want to join in, you're more than welcome to start this week. What do you say, Sandra? I think it's fine. Good deal. Nick, you okay with that? Yeah, as long as my wife doesn't see it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you've got, you've got uh, partners in crime here, so. All right. <laughs> All right, so here you go. Okay, so that invitation has been sent out, so uh, if Delilah can join Good. us, that would be killer. Good. Um, all right, so Nick, keep in mind, our show and our audience are people who are really just getting started on here, um, and, and our goal is to try and help them get moving forward, get some traction. So today's show, we want to touch all on how you go about creating, you know, a post, um, a well-written post that's going to help you get some engagement. Uh, we can do sure. some screen share, you know, the whole kind of thing. I mean, this is very <clears throat> tutorial beginner stuff. But as a guy who, you know, has spent years now studying content and creation of content, where would you start um, with creating a good post? Um, I'd start with a few basic tips. Um, I'll just to shotgun these out here real quick, and then you can pick whatever direction you want to go from these. Um, number one, um, on Google Plus, you've got the options to format your post using the asterisk. The how do you say that word? Asterisk. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. and you put that before a sentence. Put another one after the sentence, and it makes everything bold. Put an underscore before it and after it, and it makes everything italic. Uh, put a dash, and it'll make a strike through. 
So make headlines in your posts so people can, you know, if you have a post that's three paragraphs long and you have two head, you know, two or three headlines or you know, bold pieces in there, they can skim through it and read the sections they want to read. So it's a lot easier for them to consume and to um, to adjust uh, our, to which parts of the content they want to consume. So that, that helps a lot and it lets them see what it is as a whole before they even begin digging in and reading it. Number two, uh, as a uh, general rule of thumb. Posts with images get far more engagement than those without images, which is why um, prior to the, the new format, uh, you guys are familiar with the new format of link sharing that they have on Google Plus now where it actually puts an image in there now, like a full width image. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they used to not do that. It used to just be a little thumbnail. So I never used that format at all. I'd always put an image, you know, put a little headline at the top, write a paragraph or two about it. Um, when you're sharing a link or when you're sharing someone else's content along with this concept, um, the, the term I heard the other day was it's called naked sharing. It's where you just click the share button and then you click submit. Instead, click the share button, put a little headline, write a paragraph or two about why you personally enjoyed that content or why you personally think they should follow this link that you're sharing, uh, and then and then click the submit button to share it out there, different things like that. So, Oh, we have a new guest inside the uh, the show now. Yes, we do. She's here. Look at that. Yeah, That's hey. a smile. This, this this woman just looks so smart. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. I didn't think I'd be here. I thought the radio show would last. Be here would either. So that, now we have an introduction that came just right before you did. So how did we do, Delilah? It was weird. I popped in right at that time. <laughs> You know, it was so funny listening to Nicholas. I didn't talk to her because of her name. And, and Sandra, I, th I think I told you that yesterday. There's, there's no telling how many people that didn't speak to me because of that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, so now I'm starting to rework it just a little bit. But the whole, everybody sees the temptress part and they like skip over the monogamous part. <laughs> so, I'm <just> like, no. <laughs> but I'm really excited to be here. So this is awesome. You know, you know may, maybe what you ought to do is um, use some of those uh, formatting techniques that Nicholas was just talking about. Go with cap and asterisks on either side of monogamous, and then like just lowercase on the temptress, so that throws the eye at monogamous, not temptress. I don't know. There's an interesting way to use what Nicholas was talking about. I didn't get in time for that. I'll have, I'll have to go back and listen to it. See what he was <laughs> discussing there. Yeah, we were just talking about different ways to use the formatting of Google Plus when you're uh, uh, crafting a post to share with people how you can make things bold or italic or things like that. That's all. You know, <clears throat> what you're saying is really good, um, Nicholas. I, I like the formatting, I mean, for me, I use a lot. However, the one thing that I do know is that when you first come to Google+, Plus, unless you've been on social media a lot beforehand, that is just really disruptive to the brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you're trying to figure out, well, if I don't do it, am I going to be banned? Um, and how do I remember these things? It's like remembering <clears throat> shortcuts on the computer. Mm -hmm. It's not in words. So if they don't use those, right away, well then what what does that mean for them as far as their post being valuable? Uh, the, well the post can still be valuable. Ultimately what matters the most is the content of the post, which I can, I'll can i talk about that here in a couple minutes I guess since you're asking about that, but basically there's certain psychological triggers in our minds that when you can try to appeal to them, you know, you create something that's more aesthetic for example. You've heard of curb appeal when trying to get your house ready to sell and, and it makes it seem like it's more valuable or something like that. And so you know, it can take it from being viewed by you know 50 people to being viewed and read by 55 people. So it's not that it's going to destroy you by not having it. It's just that it's going to make you a little bit more successful each different tip that you're able to um, include into the crafting of your post. I told. I, I mean, I agree with that. I think it's really important. I just was saying for some people. Um, that are here that have never done a lot of social media. You know, there's a lot of businesses that we talk to, especially that are getting into more social media because they know that they need it for search, etc. And especially Google Plus, they've heard. And then they come here, and we're we're giving out all these rules. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's definitely not. We're, our goal here in sharing these tips, for me at least, is not to be the Google Police. It's just to provide some 
just general ideas for best practices. You know, and the truth is, with any business, um, I tell people this all the time. Um, you, there's a verse in the Bible that says, "In the presence of many counselors, there is wisdom." And a lot of people take that to mean that if you go find ten people and all ten people tell you that you should do something a certain way, well, then just do it that way. I don't believe that. I believe that if you find ten people that tell you ten completely different ways to do it, then you create an eleventh version that is now informed by all these ten other ones, which is your version of the way to do it, to, to run your business or to craft your post or to create content, things like that. So I'm all about just putting the tip out there, get informed, and then create your own style. So. You know, I'm, I'm glad you said that because one of the things is I read your um, profile again this morning because I wanted to uh, refresh my mind on some of the things that you believed in. And one of the things you said was crafty targeted messages and messaging. Maybe that was the word. And I thought that was really good. And so then my thought to the other side of that was if I'm concentrating on that all the time in my uh, posting and so forth, where does that then leave room? for me just to have fun with it and talk and does every post have to be that crafty targeted message and then where do we be still become ourselves and and people get to know us through it I mean are we doing that mostly for business or are we doing it mostly for us and everybody go ahead have at it and give us your opinions <laughs> actually I shared a post out yesterday that I think uh, addresses that question head-on I shared it because I was thinking about this show and uh, basically people are online and connecting with people for one of three reasons or more than one of these three reasons. Either they're looking for education. This, this also includes why people might land on your website and look at an article. Either one, they're looking for education like how to fix my leaky faucet or something like that. Some information. Education is the first E. The second one is entertainment. I mean, that's how YouTube has built their success. That's why you see cat gifs and uh, go to day and all that stuff it's just entertainment you know or, or jokes that, that circulate around on social media and the third one is engagement and the truth is um, when you're crafting your you know you carefully crafted messages when you can be engaging which is you know being personal being friendly putting yourself out there and like you were saying and you're providing information or directing something about your business or whatever when you can do all three um, education uh, entertainment and engagement that's really going to make you be able to connect with people more powerfully, I believe. I have a question, Nicholas. Um, how often do you post a day or, I mean, is that going to be an individual preference? Because I'm not a big poster. I'm not a big writer. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I see a lot of people that say you just need to be pushing content out as fast as you possibly can. But if you check mine, I only post maybe four or five times a week total uh, on Google+. And for me, I'd rather try to put out something that's high quality and low volume than high volume that's low quality. And But again, that's everyone's personal preference. And so... Yeah, I, I agree with you there. Um, if I'm going to put something out, I'd, I'd, it would, I would be hard pressed to put out high quality every single day because it's just not going to happen. But a couple of times a week, and I'm great with that because I wouldn't want to put out something low quality and then somebody look at it and go... Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly right. And plus there's a, you know, Robert Cialdini, the guy who wrote Influence of the Psychology of Persuasion, he wrote that uh, there's a, one of the weapons of influence, as he calls it, is the principle of scarcity. And when you're throwing stuff out there all the time, people just get bored with it. But when you're only giving them little nuggets here and there and they're actually very valuable, then they view it as highly valuable, like gold. You know, where does gold get its value from? Because of its industrial uses? No, because of its intrinsic value, because it's so rare. <clears throat> I like it. Mm -hmm. So what does that say when people um, <laughs> are posting things automatically, like 10 white in a, right in a row, da-da-da-da-da, you get them in the stream. Um, is that, that scarcity value um, not being scarcity then and hitting our brain in the wrong way? Yeah, it does. And it also, when you see it being plopped out like that, it also shows that well, when I see it, I immediately know, okay, they must be using an automation tool or something, like on Twitter or something like that. And I almost always immediately unfollow them, unless they're a personal friend and I'm following them for a reason like that. Um, but, yeah, it, that can turn people off when you do things like that, which is part of the reason why I think Buffer has become so popular with Twitter and Facebook is because they schedule it out and space it for you. And so it only posts, you know, one tweet every two hours or however often you have it set up. And... Uh, it seems like that seems to be high, more, much more highly effective to have things spaced out than to be dropping stuff right on top of each other. 
for me personally, when I see things that, you know, when I see people putting uh, three, four, five things in a row per se, um, or that just hit me like that, I'm with, I'm with you. I, I throw it out of my mind. I don't even look at it anymore mm -hmm. because um, it's not, it, it, it almost says to me it's not relevant at that point because it's not addressing um, things of the time maybe. And I look at Google Plus as being more in real time. Mm -hmm. Do the rest of you ever think that way, or is it just me? <laughs> yeah, Google Plus actually is more in real time. Although there's a, like a very robust API for, or that's the programming interface that allows other programs to post on here. Um, it's set up in such a way that you cannot schedule posts on Google Plus. Um, I believe that you can on the business pages. I'm not sure. If, I can't confirm that though. But I know that you cannot do it on your profile pages, which means that if you post something, whether it's from here or from an app, it's because you posted it right now. Interesting. <laughs> is that why some of the posts and stuff, when people send it through DoShare, you can see where it says sent through DoShare? Maybe. Oh, I'm not familiar with that, so I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Because a lot of those, it, those are automated posts, and a lot of times I'll just, I'll just skip over them. Mm. Yeah, that's a Google app. Okay. Um, and it doesn't work well all the time either. <laughs> I, I went in and looked at it and I said this is uh, not the way I want to do posting. I, I wasn't automating them, but I was just formatting them in there because they actually had a good format um, platform. But then when they were sent over, they didn't even come the way they looked in DoShare. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so it's like I looked like a dumbbell when they were finally posted. And I was not doing this again. <laughs> Um, I just want to say that uh, before we go any further, we do have some great uh, people that are engaging in the stream. Uh, Don uh, Swick, thank you for coming. Carmen Rojas, Lance Fields, Zara Altar, uh, Laura Williams, and Cheryl Deuce, of course. Uh, we're getting some nice comments. And then uh, we also have our uh, one that comes to our shows a lot, Kristen Di Drysdale, thanks for coming in. Tim Longwell, uh, you guys have some great comments, and if we don't get to all of them, certainly we'll go in and address them afterwards. You know that uh, we do that. It's hard sometimes when we're in the show, as, as everybody knows, to read the comments and address them because there's other things that we're talking about. Um, but um, I think that... Um, you know, it's nice to know that you're there and that we do see you. So, hey, hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to definitely say hi to Don Swick. She's getting married, and she can post it in the comments, but I think it's like in a week or something, or real close to it. Um, and uh, she's took time out of her wedding planning to come and uh, to spend time with us. And then also I wanted to shout out Kristen Drysdale. She was on a show Sunday night. I haven't had a chance to, to watch the replay on it yet, but I wanted to give her a big shout out, and I want to tell her, Kristen, I have a friend who uh, was a sniper when he was on active duty, and I'm going to try to, and he said he'd be willing to come on that show for us. So for those of you who don't know, it's a, a show about surviving a zombie apocalypse should it ever happen. So. <laughs> I, I want to point out something that was not pointed out during that show. Ryan Miner was the other guest on Sunday night's show, and he was actually in his food storage bunker, concrete bunker that's built under his garage um, in he never pointed it out. You you could tell because the ceiling was like this corrugated metal thing. Um, but yeah, so he was in a bunker. So I was at my reserve duty this weekend, and uh, they the, for lunch they always give us MREs, and you know we sign for it and we take an MRE. But nobody ever wants to eat an MRE when we're there on the weekend because we're you know right down the road from McDonald's or Chipotle or something like that, you know. So we so we take the MRE and we drive down to Chipotle. And so I collect everybody's MREs because nobody wants to keep them. So I take them all. So I acquired like five or six more MREs this weekend. And I brought them home and put them in my survival kit. Nicholas, I love MREs. You send me some. <laughs> yeah, I think they're good. I don't mind them at all. I'll use them when I'm hiking or camping or whatever. <laughs> don't sweat, Google, please. <laughs> I, I thought that was pretty cool that when you made that statement, Nicholas, because it's true. We are not the Google police. I don't think anybody should ever take on that title. <laughs> but, but certain people, when you're putting out best practices and things like that, or what you, what you at least personally feel are best practices, a lot of people are like, oh, you're the Google police. No, this is just my opinion. If you like it, great. If not, then make your own style and go with it. 
Well, and what you just um, said isn't that part of the content um, issue? When we're when we're posting things, it's so easy sometimes to come across as the only expert and that we know it all, as opposed to you know this is the way I see it and what uh, you can have a different opinion if you do. You know, I'm open. I'll, I'll listen to what you have to say even. And I think it's the uh, way that we we put that in our comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, and and that's why you want to be careful with your tone and being upfront, and when you're when you're giving advice, you know. Yeah, it's even true on a hangout on air, um, a live one like we're doing right now that's um, sent to YouTube. You know, the one thing that I've I've thought a lot about, and it goes along with content, and maybe not so much in a post, but certainly a hangout on air is content also. It's just verbally. But right. we forget that this is going to reside on YouTube where the comments are not always going with it, depending on how settings are and what goes over there, etc. So when we're talking here, it, it always, um, in the back of my mind, I think the person who was never listening to what we were doing, like when I just named off the people that were in our stream, what does that mean over there on um, YouTube to the people that are watching the uh, final production, if you will? And when we're doing content in an HOA, a hangout on air, um, how much of that should we consider, and do we ever consider it? Um, well, there's usually not as, from what I've noticed, there's usually not as much commenting and things like that going on over on when people rewatch it on YouTube. So sometimes people will comment and share it out to their to their circles. Um, the what I would suggest to the viewer, and this is what I do when I re watch a replay for an HOA, is I actually I will go to the um, the event page and I will live comment as I'm watching it. So I'll be commenting and you'll see like 10 comments in a row from me from the you know 30 minutes or the one hour that I was sitting there watching it and commenting every 5 to 10 minutes on what I was watching. I always think that's a lot of fun. And then later on someone notices it and they come back and they respond, hey, thanks for the great comments or whatever. But, yeah. And, and you know, I want to take, take a minute uh, and shout out a, a good friend of mine um, is going to be watching this in the replay. I spoke with him last night. He couldn't make it live. I'm hoping to bring this guy over and, and teach him the value of Google+. His name is Jeb Blunt. He's written four books um, on sales and marketing. Uh, his biggest one is People Buy You. Um, but uh, one of the things that I told him to do when he watched this is exactly what you're talking about right now, Nick, is you know jump in the thread, say, hey, I'm here, you know, and... Uh, comment during the show um, so Jeb thanks for watching by the way and uh, yeah jump in to the thread that's a great way to watch a replay um, it's good for you uh, and it's good for the person who's running the show so um, glad you're doing it that way but that's a, that's a great little tool Nicholas, when oh you can't hear you. Is he I talking? Was muted. Yeah, I was. I was muted. <laughs> fail. I fail. I was gonna say another great thing that that does is anyone who has commented already on the thread will then get a notification when you leave a comment, and sometimes that gives them then the opportunity to jump back in and re-spark the conversation. You know, when people when you do that, and it's an opportunity to meet new people or whatever. Um. Delilah, when you first came to Google Plus, did you have any uh, questions as far as content, or I mean, even you're still relatively new, I guess. But do you, was there any question in your mind, or did you just not even care? I mean, you just were yourself, and I don't mean you don't care in a in a negative way. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm not trying to say that. <laughs> oh, I don't care. Actually, <laughs> I had tons. And in fact, I came to Google Plus because I was invited to be on a show, and I was so worried about making a fool of myself. I actually got on Google Plus two weeks prior and just started watching HOAs and things just so I wouldn't make a fool out of myself before I went onto the show. But then I, I started watching how people commented to each other. Y'all don't know how long I just sat around just watching how people converse with each other in comment streams and everything else before I even said a word. 
just because I, I wanted to understand and not make a fool of myself. <laughs> what what was um, one of your major questions then why you were watching? Because I think a lot of newbies will have the same feelings and they can uh, resonate with what you say. One of the first questions that I really had was how did this person build up the show or come up with this show? Why are all these other people so interested in, in, in this topic? Because they, I would find other shows that were the same thing. So why this one over that one? And then I started noticing these groups of people would wind up in the same shows. So I was like, what, what kind of relationships have these people built together? Because they seem to be so friendly. And how long did that take? And what brought them all here? I mean, it was just one thing after another. And finally, I jumped in and just started talking to them, so <laughs> which helped. But and and it was, but it was kind of nerve wracking. And then learning the platform itself. I mean, because it, one of the first times I actually uh, tried to put a blog post on Google Plus, I made a I made a horrible, horrible boo boo and checked that little box at the bottom. Oh no. <laughs> And, uh, with, e with emails? <laughs> yes, that one. <laughs> and the very first comment I got was Mark Trek Pagan. <laughs> he, he, he was very, very nice. He really was. And, and let me know that that was not acceptable and that I shouldn't do that because it, it forced my post in people's stream and I, I thanked him very much and I was like, duly noted, I won't do that again. But yeah, first post, made a fool of myself. So just go ahead, try it out, make a fool of yourself. Everybody's going to realize you're new and let them know and they'll be really nice and help you. You know, the first time when I I never used it because I, I don't I don't I tend not to use things I don't know about. But um, after I knew what it was, it was like, why did Google put that there in the first place? Then when you think about it, here's people that are new, and it's like, okay, Google's asking me, why not? Yeah, that was my thought. <laughs> I mean, why are you yelling at me then? Because Google was the one that encouraged me to check it. The, the thing is, too, when you make mistakes and then you laugh about it like you're doing right now and you learn from it and you, you drive on, I think there's something about that that speaks a lot about you and people are attracted to it because we all make mistakes and, you know, yeah. to see that you just admit it, you learn from it, you move on, I think that says a lot about you. I, it only took once. <laughs> 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 no, everybody was very, very nice, and, and I told them, I'm new, I'm so sorry. Again. So, yeah, if you make mistakes, go ahead, get them over in the beginning when nobody knows who you are, it doesn't matter, and laugh about it. <laughs> yep, yep. But there certainly are some people that have a very hard time laughing at themselves. Yes. Um, it's not it's not a natural thing for a lot of people to do because they take it so personally because they're trying so hard to be politically correct or to be polite or to be considerate whatever you want to call it and um, so when they do make that kind of a social faux pas it's a it's a psychological um, challenge to get over it sometimes actually I just wrote up my post for today <laughs> now that I'm getting ready to share out but I haven't posted it yet because I haven't found an image that I Want to use it. Uh, by the way, all my images, I always take my own photography to go with my images. So I need to find the right image to go with this post. But anyways, it's about the fact that a lot of us are really filled with pride, and that causes a few things to happen. Number one is we maybe it's naivety or maybe it's the pride, but we think our stuff is just top notch. We're awesome. We don't make mistakes. And therefore we by not recognizing our faults, by not recognizing our mistakes, we don't learn from them, we don't improve ourselves, we don't grow. And that's one thing that we need to do is knock that pride down a notch. Uh, try to find what we're doing wrong. To identify it. When you identify it, learn from it. Observe what other people are doing and, and just keep improving yourself. You know, you mentioned in the beginning um, that I, I personally, for me, one of the biggest um, um, gifts that I ever thought about when I was learning how to post in social media, but then certainly over here in Google Plus was why does anybody want to know what I think about this and why do they care while I'm even putting it up there? 
<clears throat> and I think if we think about that before we even start, it certainly does change things. Um, I've talked a lot with a lot of men. They have more of a, a problem, I think, sometimes with just jumping in and, and, and not just saying, I like this post. You know, that's not really a good post, in my opinion, because it doesn't tell me anything other than, okay, you liked it, but who are you, number one, and why, why should I find it interesting? Because I look at it, you're passing it on into my stream because you want me to see some, uh, something worthwhile in it. So what did you see? And when you put that to somebody like that, what was valuable in this post that made you even want to share it in the first place? And then secondly, why do you think I would be interested in it? If you include that in your post, it really adds a lot of content for, for me to go further maybe. I completely, completely agree with that. that. That's kind of what I was trying to hint at when I talked about naked sharing or when you say very little and it's very skimpy sharing. Yeah, That's definitely. a good way to put it, naked sharing. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> well, That would be a great post. Mm. Saying, Are you naked sharing? <laughs> yeah, so if, they, if they, they don't put anything, that'd be naked sharing. If they only write, like, I really like this, and that's it, well, then that'd be, like, you know, I don't know, skimpy sharing or something. Sharing. <laughs> skimpy sharing, sure. So. <clears throat> My thought on it is that so many people are worried about – making fun of themselves or, or not fitting in or looking strange on a post. But that's what makes them stand out. Uh -huh. If you're doing something that you're trying to please everyone, then it's not going to stand out. It's going to just sit there in the, in the herd and not be seen by anybody because it's not interesting enough. So you got to put yourself out there to get some of your personality shown. Mm -hmm. One thing too, uh, um, I like to ask myself when I'm posting something is, are other people talking about this? Well, if not, then I'm providing something original. And then if the answer is yes, then I ask myself, well, am I providing a perspective or some new information that isn't already in the mix? And so then if I'm adding a new perspective or new thoughts on it or something that I believe is original, then I'll share it out. If it's the same as what everybody else is talking about, I usually don't jump on those bandwagons. I think that's a good in, a good thing. I mean, Dennis, you're awfully quiet, but you and I, <laughs> and certainly Nicholas, um, the one thing that I see a lot is people share, which is great. We all share. But when I keep seeing the same thing shared over and over again and, and people say, well, there's nothing more I can say to this, it's great. Well, then, uh, have you ever looked and seen how many people we have in common? And probably I'm seeing this ten times in my stream. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like yours as much as I like you. I probably won't do anything with it. It will just pass me by in the wind. So what you were saying is really true. If everybody's posting about it, why would I be posting? What different thing can I add to it? Or maybe I better come up with something new that's happening that I find very interesting that you might too. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, I actually took some heat a little while back because I don't personally do very much sharing at all. Uh -huh. And often when I do, I'll share it out there, and then after like the after the activity around it is faded, I'll I'll delete it so I have a very clean stream. Um, instead, I always try to post my own thoughts, my own comments, my own ideas, my own photography, and so that my stream, if someone were to go and look through it, it's you know 95% completely original content. Oh, the cat! I think the cat has something to say. Yes, my, my, my cat has tuned in and uh, <coughs> is peering at me. Uh, Was she just purring? I think we heard I think we heard it purring. Yeah, probably <laughs> right next to my microphone. <laughs> it even pushed its nose against the microphone a few minutes ago, so yeah. And this one, unlike Bob, uh, Amber doesn't have an account yet. So Oh okay. So but your dog does. Tripod Bob. My, my dog does have an account, yes, and is very good friends, I might add, with Bob. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and for those in the audience that really who have no idea who Bob is, Dennis. <laughs> yes, this is Bob. I mean, Bob. do you know how long it took me to know that Bob Boss really was a cat? <laughs> yeah. Mia I'm sorry, me. Mia. I just I didn't get it for the longest time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh well. 
Well, and then when you do, it's great. But that's a that's a perfect example of how we get lost in things sometimes. Mm -hmm. If you're not part of the group, you don't understand what it is. And so, oh my gosh. <laughs> so they're asking him uh, thinking that Bob Boss was her husband. I did too. <laughs> yeah. And then I thought that's a really ugly picture for a man to be putting on his avatar. <laughs> <laughs> I need to come to your show and drink over that one. <laughs> That's great. Oh, boy. oh gosh. <laughs> oh, oh dear. <laughs> I'm well. sure I'm sure not the first ones that have thought that though. <laughs> no. No, actually you told me that she gets it all the time. I'm sure I regularly asked if <clears throat> Bob is her Husband, her brother, her yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and do you guys know uh, Shannon and Wendy Hernandez? I know uh -huh. Shannon. I've seen him. Yeah, so they get that all the time too. They're brother and sister, and they're like, "Oh, are you guys husband and wife?" <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. People don't put together that Cheryl and I are married all the time. Cheryl's like getting. Oh my gosh, you're actually, wait a minute, you're married to Dennis? I didn't clue that up. <laughs> what? Yeah. Me is married, Mia's married to a cat, and uh, <laughs> my, my wife and I are not actually married at all. Yeah. And I'm the one that lives in Tennessee. What is wrong with y'all? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> So, all of that being said, what would, how would we change that as far as contextual meaning? <laughs> oh, that's, that's the question right there. <laughs> I mean, I think some of it is just like, you know, you see, like in your stream, you see a lot of the same people coming to your shows. You know, you kind of have that, you, you, a lot of the same friends coming. And so you just have this assumption, well, of course, they know who Tripod Bob is, you know. And so, and so then the one new person who happened to come to the show, they just have to get keyed in or something. I guess if you don't know the answer to something, you just ask. Because like like you mentioned, Mia Voss gets so I asked her that one time, and she just answers and we drive on. So I guess if you don't know, just ask it. Throw it in the comment stream. You're you're a very self assured um, man. Does I am. that mean? Yeah, it does. And so therefore, does that mean that everybody falls in the same category? I mean, a lot of people are not even comfortable with asking a question mm -hmm. when they first come. It's like. Why would I? Because that's not a normal thing to do. You go to Facebook, people don't ask questions for the most part. It's just they give answers all the time, da-da-da. Mm. So now we're saying, okay, ask questions. Really? <laughs> you want me to ask a question? You're going to give me an answer? I don't even know how to ask a question. <laughs> I've never done that. <laughs> I got you, yeah. And so that, that's why it comes at both ends. You know, the, the viewer or the person outside the group and the person who is presenting inside the group, which I guess would be the four of us in this context. And so at our end, what we should do is try to put stuff in context as much as we can to make it clear for anyone who's new. And at their end, if they do have the nerve to do it, then please ask a question if you aren't familiar with the context of something we're talking about. You know, if we're talking about formatting posts, you, then, you know, and you don't have a clue what we're talking about, then say, hey, where, where do I find this option at? Or where do I go to do that? Or something like that. You know, get the context, you know. But that, again, that's only if you have the nerve to do it. Well, I, I asked a question one time when I was first new when I got the nerve up to do it and the person that I asked the question with was an influencer and they came back and said, I answered that question in a post that was obviously you didn't read. <laughs> and I said, mm. okay, I don't think I'll ask any more questions for a while. <laughs> well, at, at least, least not, not for this person. person. <laughs> you know, that, that's funny too. I just, you know, I'm in college right now, but I'm, I'm 10 years, you know, 12 years removed from high school. You know, I turned 30 this year. And... Oh dear God! Uh, the Earth is falling apart. <laughs> well, my, my point that I'm, yeah, my the point that I'm le le leading to here is that I'm I'm sitting in classes with most mostly 18 and 19 year old kids, and mm -hmm. it seems like in all the classes, you know, if there's 30 of us in there, there's only maybe four or five of us who ask all the questions, have all the conversation throughout the class time, and all and just about all of us are, I would say all of us are over the age of 25. And so these, these younger kids, you know, they are, they're shy, they're not comfortable asking questions, or they might feel like they're going to be embarrassed in front of the, a crowd of their peers. Whereas as, old, as, as we get older, we realize, you know, it's, 
if I ask a dumb question, who cares? I just want to know the answer. Or maybe you guys are smiling more than the others, and they just know that you're the experts. <laughs> Yeah, they just think you're really smart. You're smart. <laughs> Maybe they're afraid you'll attack them like a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's one thing that that I have noticed in the in the short time that I've been here, and maybe it's just because of the shows that it that I frequent, but there really aren't that many younger people here. Could yes. that be part of it? I think a uh, part of it might be the circles we run in because I was sitting in class the other day and there was a 18 year old kid and he was on his little tablet and he was scrolling through his Google Plus account, you know. But I think they connect with their peers and stuff, and we're on here connecting with other people who are talking about marketing or talking about blogging or talking about photography or more professional type stuff. I mean, at least that's who I have in my circles. So that's who I'm seeing every day. It's because I'm connecting around topics, whereas they're connecting with people who are into skateboarding or people who are into the video game they like or things like that. So I think it just has to do with the circles we roll with. I got you. So they are here. They're just in a different area. Yeah, and I don't know the exact demographic breakdown of Google+, Plus, but I do know that they have a, a, a younger audience that is slowly migrating over. Okay. Yeah, it's a little different of a younger audience, though, still, than uh, the Snapchatters. Um, you know, they... they I mean, one person that's really active on here, many of us may know, is Jake Luke. Um, Jake's only 15, which a lot of people don't realize. Um, but, you know, he's a very, very uh, intelligent, deep-thinking um, young man. And uh, the, I think there tends to be a little bit more of a serious nature um, to the younger people that are on here. Though I do want to say, Nick, uh, I, I want to know those people to circle that are into skateboarding because I, I, I still ride. Oh yeah, nice. So okay, Sandra. Does that come with a walker? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it does come with wrist guards and a helmet. Well, I was just going to bring up the comment by Carrie Wield, and she's out of the UK, and she says. Um, I don't post all of my content on Google+. Plus. I tend to share different content on different platforms. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another thing when we're talking about content that probably we should talk about. Um, what makes good content is make it appropriate for the platform that you're on. Yeah, and part of it, part of that for me at least, is the people I'm connected with on different platforms. For example, on Facebook, I'm connected with personal friends and family that I know in real life for the most part. I have a few friends that I've met online. Whereas on Google+, Plus, almost everyone I've met are people who are, I've met online who are interested in similar topics. So I can share something from the blog or something over here, whereas I'm not going to try to solicit my family and personal friends to, please go read my blog, you know. Okay, Dennis, you can read the next one. <laughs> Ray Miller says, I am not worried about what people say. I am from the South. I have heard most of it before. Too many people are afraid to say anything when what they have to say could be the best post made all day. We just have to remember to be ourselves. It is, man, I hate that. I <laughs> it's a lot just, easier that way. Thank you. Wow. I, I really don't understand <clears throat> why it is that we that they cut off the long quotes like that. Anyway. Yeah. I want to I want to point out a comment. I think it's the best comment that I've seen so far today. Here, I'll put it up on the screen. <laughs> I just I just want to point that out. <laughs> I love you too, Don Swick. You rock. She is so cute. I love that picture she put up the other day. She's such a doll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you said someone who knows how to smile is coming on the show starting next week or whatever, I, that's the first person I thought of, actually, was Don Swick, because that big smile on her avatar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but since, she, since she's getting married, she's probably got other priorities right now, don't you think? Yes, yes. 
<laughs> let's ask Delilah, the relationship expert here. Do you think she has other priorities? <laughs> I, I think she has a ton. And I know she's going to be doing a show like the day before she gets married or something. Yes. I'm like, that is crazy. Fr yeah, Friday is her first <laughs> HOA that she's ever That's been on. It, honey. <laughs> wow. She gets married on Saturday. <laughs> Have a drink while you're going. <laughs> <laughs> you may need it. <laughs> Some people work much better under a lot of stress, that's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, and she's going to have tons of it. Um, the day before I got married, I was out of my mind. <laughs> so, um, Nicholas, do you think that your background in uh, psychology and everything has given you an edge into how you were able to embrace posting differently than and not difficult? I mean, you seem to come to it very naturally. Uh, I would say so. Um, I don't have a thorough background in psychology itself. Um, that's what I'm going to school for right now, so later on I can hopefully be able to claim that. My background is specifically in military training of psychological operations, which is predominantly two twofold. One, it's studying target audiences, trying to understand how other people think. Um, and that also comes into, like you mentioned beforehand, body language, which is, I think we call that kinesics. Or kinetics. Yeah, kinesi is it kinetics? I thought it had an S in there. Yeah, kinetics, I think, is right. Kinesthetics. That's it. <laughs> okay, yeah, so you got that. You got it starts body language. with a K. <laughs> Anyways, it's just body language. It's a fancy name for body language. And then and you also have, like, proxemics, like how close you stand to people, stuff like that. So that all plays into it. So you're studying your target audience. That's the first half, anyways. The second half is trying, then, to persuade your target audience or trying to appeal to them. Uh, and that's where, you know, you come up with your lines of persuasion, your weapons of influence, like Robert Cialdini says. And you have all these different tactics, all these mental triggers that you can try to appeal to that can get people to act or to take action. You know, I mean, there are, are you guys familiar with the concept of mental triggers at all? You know what I mean by that? Go There's, ahead a, mother, and talk There's a mother turkey, for example. If they, they rely on the cheap, cheap sound that their baby turkeys make. And if a baby turkey stops making that sound, they will stop caring for it or possibly even kill it. And if you take a stuffed polecat, which is the arch nemesis of a turkey, just a stuffed toy one. The turkey will attack it on sight to protect her young. But if you take that toy polecat and you put a tape recorder in it and it makes a cheap, cheap sound and sounds like the, the baby turkey, it'll actually like push it over in there next to its uh, baby turkeys and care for it like it's its own child. So that cheap, cheap sound is a mental trigger. So, But a lot of times we have these mental triggers also. You know, you see a pretty image and it's going to get you to engage more effectively than a post without any imagery. Or you know what I'm saying? So there's all these little things that you can do to try to um, hit as many triggers as you can in, in the human uh, psyche that draws them in and engages with people and things like that. So you're discussing branding models or, yeah, or yeah. a portion of it, exactly. Uh, and exactly what everybody here has in one specialty or, or another. Like we see that that fedora, we all actually are going to think of Dennis. We see a tiara. We're gonna think of mm -hmm. Mia. Yeah. We see some crazy Hawaiian shirt. And <clears throat> Dennis is right there, and big red hair is me. You know, <laughs> just mental so, and visual cues. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And pole cats need to learn how to cheat. That's right. <laughs> that was yep. a cheap shot. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> this cat, I don't know what's up today. <laughs> Is that your cat? It won't leave me alone today. Go away. Anyway. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We're derailed completely. <clears throat> Alexandria Rick Gonzalez says it is called kinesics. That's what the that's the term we used in my anthropology class was kinesics, I, I believe. Now my understanding is like eighty two I'm 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 thinking it's eighty two percent of all messages that we send are through body language. Mm hmm I would I would totally believe with that because think of all the times you sent a text and you meant it to be playful and 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 like if they had seen your facial expression or you know seen your smile or something, they wouldn't know it was playful. And but they don't see that, so they think you're insulting them, and they're like, "How dare you?" Yes. You know, have you ever <laughs> seen stuff like that happen? So. Yeah, well, and, and that, that's why within the text culture, it was necessary to create things like LOL 
and you know, and emoticons. emoticons. You know, the, the 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 movement towards that quick written communication as opposed to spoken and body language resulted in us needing to create basically typed up body language. Yeah, yeah, that makes complete sense. Yeah, I haven't really thought of that, but yeah, that would be exactly why we do it, because otherwise we'd just be ticking each other off all the time. <laughs> oh, well, and usually you are. <laughs> By the way, I never thought of that before either. It just kind of came to me in this discussion. But, yeah, I mean, how many times have you gotten into a situation that you just didn't even know how you were going to get out of because of a text or email conversation that's gone completely sideways? Um, I guess I'm the only one that that's happened to? No, not at all. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why maybe I don't post as much as I, as I probably should. For one, I don't like to write. and I would much rather just speak. But then as I'm typing, I'm having to explain why I'm typing or what I'm texting or the meaning behind the text. I just seem to call you. Yeah, that's, it just seems like a lot of work. That's why I love the way that the the Hangouts work on Google+. Plus. Like, I have a guy I do some work for, and when we don't call each other on the phone. We don't email each other. We literally do a, a Hangout, talk to each other face-to-face, -face, figure out what needs to get done, and then, like, if there's a few notes that we took during it, you know, we'll have a shared document, or maybe we'll send an email to send some resources back and forth, but the conversations we have are face-to-face, -face and it helps so much. It makes it so much easier. That's cool. Now, I saw the other day they're going to do a new Android app or something for Google+. Plus. Was that right? Was I reading that right? Or something? I Because I hope to. I, yeah, I hope so. I have an Android phone, and I, my Google+, Plus just hangs up on my phone. It, get uh -huh. stuck and everything else, and so when I leave home, I can't really do a whole lot with it. <laughs> I hate trying to access Google Plus on my phone. I hardly use any of the apps on my phone. I don't even like to talk on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> but then other people are, like, doing HOAs from their phone. I'm like, how do you do that? Mine's frozen up and still showing stuff from, like, three days ago <laughs> on my phone. <laughs> like, it won't reset. <laughs> I, I just want to point out that nearly 60% of Cheryl's engagement is from her phone. Really? So when you think about how amazing it is how engaged my wife is, and then you realize that most of it's done from her phone. Here, huh. my wife does it. Yeah. Is, she, is she at your house right now? No, she's not. Oh. She's working. Oh. But she is in the audience. I, I saw her in the audience. Yeah, no, she's she's a nurse, so she's working right now. A couple people mentioned something that's really good. Um, actually, your wife, I think, might have started the conversation. She said, let me blue box myself so I can read it. I find that when I share my emotion in a post, then it gets more comments, make people feel. And then there was another comment that followed up to that, which was right on point that said, a post should come out and grab emotion. And uh, I find this to be so incredibly true that, some of my most popular posts that I've ever shared um, have been ones that were more or less specifically uh, targeted to incite an emotional response, you know, had some sort of a emotional meaning to them. Yes. Yeah, I mean, this goes back to basic sales. Uh, you know, people buy largely based on emotion, and then they quantify that based on, uh, you know, justification. We like to call it intellect, but the reality is we justify our emotional decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's going to be the same thing here on Google+. Plus. If you can elicit an emotion or share an emotion, um, which helps others to feel what you're feeling, so yes. one of those two, I mean, there, there's two ways of utilizing emotion, but both of them can be really beneficial in increasing your engagement. Yeah, and I, I'm taking a formal logic class right now, and it's really interesting because a lot of the persuasion tactics that I've studied from the Army Field Manual, um, they literally contradict formal logic. They're designed specifically to target people's emotions, 
even though that logically the argument that you might be making in your per, in your persuasive appeal doesn't really stand firm on logic. It stands firm on appealing toward emotion. Most people don't even realize that, but they're so effective, so we use them in warfare. <clears throat> well, we base decisions based uh, our decisions are based on emotions. Mm -hmm. um, it will always go back to it'll override the logic because that's the subconscious. Yeah. yeah, well, then the pictures that we have to have along with the poster have also got to draw the emotion because that's going to draw anything. The picture will draw everything first before they even get to the post. If you can pull it out the picture first. I, I stream through my uh, stream and I look at the images first. Then I look at the avatar second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it that Nicholas takes his own pictures. That is so cool. <laughs> I have, well, I am super, super fortunate. Um, the Army is allowing me to use the camera that belongs to our company, and I have about $10,000 worth of photography equipment. The camera body, all by itself, without a lens, I looked it up on Amazon, cost $3,200. The lens that I use most of the time cost $2,200. Plus, I have a whole bunch of other accessories. I could never afford to get that myself, but they let me sign it out from work and I go in one week in a month, and for the rest of the month, I have it at home with me. Wow. That is cool. You yeah. know, you can actually set a camera that nice up to be a webcam. Uh, I have tried it, and I'm going to use it, but you have to use a third-party app like Wirecast or something like that. Yes. OBS, Wirecap, uh, SparkoCam, yes. one of those. You, you do have to do that, yes. But um, yeah, I've been working on that for the bandwidth show playing around with cameras like that. Oh, that's right. You're on the bandwidth show. I watched one of yours. Hopefully it wasn't one of the first two weeks. If it wasn't, I apologize. It was the one where they talked one of the band members into doing the twerk. <laughs> oh. I don't know that which one that was, but good. I'll just see it. <laughs> that was a pretty good sh show, actually. Uh, yeah, sound quality was good. Video quality was decent. Um, so. That was the dancing. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I pulled up the wrong one here. I have to take this one down. Thank you, Cheryl, for that, but this was the one I meant to bring up. <laughs> um, I think this is something, you know, towards the end of the day that's really good. Alexandria, Alexandra Ricky Gonzalez. There is a theory that says the reason relationships can occur online is the very reason you all mentioned. We adapt to a verbal environment. But what does that do to trust, Mr. Psych Warfare? <laughs> okay, well, Alex already knows my style. If I don't know the answer to something, I dig through, like, and I read, like, um, I dig through the database at my school until I find an answer to it. So I don't have an answer to this, but, um, like, she was discussing a topic the other day, and she said she had read a couple of articles out of it, and she sent them over, and I read them, and it was a really good conversation. But that's my answer for this right now. I don't really have a good answer for that. And I, I actually saw that question and already made a mental note that I want to go do some good research on it and, uh, and get some ideas to wrap my head around that. Cool. Can we ask you to come back when you do? Uh, you know, if you make a post about that in depth, come give us the link here in this feed. Sure. It, it might be a little while. I've got a couple of essays due this week, and I've got oh, some exams and then finals next week, or in two weeks. <laughs> hey, we all know the value in online marketing of having something revived, so please come back in three weeks, Nicholas, and sure. put it in the post so everybody starts talking again. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect, perfect. <laughs> so, um, I just want to uh, point out here that um, there's some comments going on about iPhones, and uh, I, I just might have to delete anyone that is saying positive things about iPhones from the conversation. Just saying. See, I just refuse to buy any phone that you have to buy specialty cords for and specialty this and specialty that because it's not universal with everything else. Yeah. <laughs> I just want no, to I, I, I am just kidding. It's an ongoing joke um, with my whole family because most of my family are iPhone people. And, and the thing that's funny about the joke is I'm a Google person the way most people are iPhone people or Apple people. Me which too. is not really that normal, um, and and so whenever I make fun of people who love iPhones, <clears> I make <throat> fun of myself. 
Um, I use so many different yeah. Google services. Wait, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, you can make comments about the iPhones. I was completely tongue-in-cheek there. Anyway. Yeah. I, I totally respect both Apple and, and the Google side of the Android family. But for me, I use so many Google products that it just makes sense for me to have a operating system on my phone that is tailored to Google products. So that's why I'm an Android guy. Yeah, yeah, and and that's the same for me. That's really what it comes down to, you know. I mean, I've been on Gmail since 2005, so. Um, yeah, I mean, I have one, two, three, four. I've got five tabs open right now with different Google services open in my web browser. <laughs> so what you are telling me is my phone just stinks. <laughs> it's not that's no, you you can't say that because look here, um, Dawn. <laughs> this is good. What she said. She says if my iPhone gets more than six feet away from me, my heart starts skipping a beat, and my fiance has a flip phone still. <laughs> yes. So you're safe. <laughs> you know what I want to invent. Would this be the coolest invention or whatever? You know, we have Bluetooth technology that we can connect to our smartphone, right? So I want to invent a Bluetooth thing that looks like the old Motorola, the great big brick phones, but really it's just a, but really it's just a Bluetooth to your real phone. So you can pull that thing out and be walking around with like a 1991 version cell phone. Oh, I love How awesome that. would that be? Oh, I love it. I actually, believe it or not, now normally I would have it right here. I have an old brick phone. And oh, yeah? Daryl... Please get this back for me. We we lent it to a friend of ours um, to do a, a YouTube commercial for their business, um, and it's been with them for six months. And I, <laughs> I but, just big phone. But do you yes, know that's actually worth money. But if I'm not mistaken, you can't actually use that anymore because they don't have the network support for those older style phones, right? So you, but you could use them again if they ran on Bluetooth. No. Well. They're okay, actually so taking them, making satellite phones and stuff out of them now somehow, and they're okay. they actually have quite a bit of value because they're almost unbreakable. Huh. It, it it will work as a nine one one. You could call nine one one with it, but that's okay. about all you can do. Okay. Um, and you know, I've got the charger. I've got the whole thing. I can power it up. I can get the the orange light going on the, on the thing. You know. <laughs> The alphanumeric, ooh, um, yeah, it's uh, it's quite a beast. But that would be the coolest thing. I absolutely love that idea. I would totally geek out and do that. Maybe I should try to get on Shark Tank or something for that. <laughs> you should. You should. I love that idea. And nobody would ever just start talking to you automatically anymore because you're on the on the little bitty Bluetooth talking to somebody, and the person next to you thinks they're talking. To them by accident. Have you ever done that? Have you seen those commercials about that? The girl, the girl's like, "Hey, you want to go to this party later on tonight?" And the guy's like, "Yeah, sure." And then she turns and looks and like, "What?" Are you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I got a really funny story. Back in <clears throat> this was 2006. Okay, and I had a Bluetooth in 2006. All right, and I always wear my Bluetooth on my right ear. I walked into this office as I was getting off of a call with my sister, okay? And when you walked into this office, the door opened to the right, and then the desk, there was a couch right in front of you, and the desk was off on the left-hand side over here. And I walk in the door, and I go, I love you, to my sister. And the receptionist, and I did business with this company a lot. The receptionist looks at me and goes, I love you too. <laughs> and literally, for the next three years doing business with that particular general contractor, every time I walked in the office, the receptionist looked at me and goes, Oh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. See what the big phone that would never happen. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. So we have gone quite a bit over this week. So um, let's go through and just closing comments on uh, on content. Sandra, what's your takeaway for today? Wow. <clears throat> I think the best part for me was um, <laughs> naked sharing is not a good thing, but a, nor is a bikini sharing. We need the full Monty. 
had bikini Jerry. And he was afraid to talk to me. <laughs> what, what we need is Mormon modesty sharing. Just saying. <laughs> I love the idea of naked sharing versus and bikini sharing. I think that's a great thing. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm probably going to be the advocate of that. No, no naked sharing, no bikini sharing. <laughs> love it. Love it. Thank you, Nicholas. Delilah. You are welcome. Take away. My takeaway? Delilah. Oh, you get oh, Delilah. you get the closing thoughts, my friend. Okay. Uh, my takeaway would be no oversharing. <laughs> <laughs> Share quality, not quantity. <laughs> Keep the overshares at home. Okay. And Nicholas. Um, my takeaway is that you should buy my book. I just put a link for it in there. <laughs> yes, you should. Three dollars and ninety-five cents. You can afford that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Totally. And, and, and remind everybody again: is the book about content? Yes, this is the first of three. The first one is one hundred percent about stuff we talked about today, and uh, much more actually about generating very good, engaging content that really compels people to action. And the following books that will be coming out will be talking about design for like your blog or your website and then also about influence will be the third one. The ABCs, amazing content, brilliant design, and commanding influence. Good. Like Thank it. Thank you. That's good. All right. We're going to go out again. This is a uh, five-state killing spree. Yes, I do have rights uh, to this music to be able to play it on HOAs because, hey, they were on bandwidth. Um, and Nicholas is the Google police. Yes, yeah. Nicholas is the Google police. So, Google, if you're watching, I can produce the uh, document that proves that Five State Killing Spree said I can play this. And this is exactly measured profit. Please, since these bands do so kindly let us play this here, go support the bands, uh, find their music, buy their music. These guys are awesome. This is Five State Killing Spree, exact measured profit. I want it's a matter of